To get started, you can open the Query Wizard within Query Search by going to the Design menu and selecting Launch Query Wizard. The Query Wizard is a cool new feature of Query Search that we designed to help speed up your data testing and open up the application to SQL novices and other non-technical members of your team. In a recent poll of data experts on LinkedIn, it was cited that approximately 80% of columns did not go through any data transformations when being loaded from source databases and files into their data warehouse. The Query Wizard allows you to quickly and easily generate queries to test your data in situations where there are no transformations. So this means that on average, around 80% of a data warehouse or big data installation can be tested without having to do any SQL coding. The Query Wizard can also be used to create a starting point for more advanced queries by doing things like populating table and column names, so it can be useful for experienced SQL coders as well. So let's go through an example. The Query Wizard will help you generate tests to compare the data in your source tables to the data in your target tables. So the first thing that we have to do is specify the connections for your source and target data. In this example, I'm choosing a SQL Server database as my source and an Oracle database in our data warehouse as my target. Once you select a connection, you'll see information relating to the metadata of that connection and when it was last updated in Query Search. If this information is not available or outdated, you can click on this Refresh button to get the latest metadata from your connection. The Query Wizard is able to generate tests, known as query pairs, that can check for data defects in a few different ways. The most basic comparison is the row count comparison. This will just make sure that the source tables that you've selected have the same number of rows as their corresponding target tables. Next you'll be asked to choose one or more schemas from your source and target connections to narrow down the tables that you want to choose from. Based on the schema selected, you'll see a list of source and target tables. Here you can define the relationships between those tables that you want to test. To define a relationship, simply click and drag the source table on the left over the corresponding target table on the right. This will create a query mapping and automatically generate the queries to check the row counts below it. You can adjust the sizes of the different panes to make your selections easier to see, or you can hide panels completely to give you more room to work with. You can define as many query mappings as you'd like, and the drag and drop interface makes it really easy to do this quickly. When you select a mapping that you've created from the query mappings list, it will highlight the source and target tables to show you which tables it is referencing. If you made a mistake, you can click on the remove button next to the mapping to delete that test. Once you've finished with your selections, you can go on to the next step. Here you choose which folder you want to put the new query pairs into, and you have the option to create a new folder to organize these generated query pairs together. You also have the option to add these to a new test suite, which I'll talk more about later in this video. Finally, clicking next here will bring you to the summary page, where you can review what you've done so far. If everything looks good, you can click on the create button to generate the query pairs. Once this is done, we can go to the folder that we chose and see the generated query pairs. You can see that there is a separate query pair created for each of the source to target mappings that we selected in the wizard. If I open one of these, you can see the queries that were generated based on the selections we made. This query pair will test to make sure that the row counts of this source table and this target table are the same, and report a failure if they aren't. Let's run this quickly to see the results that we get. Now that the test finished, you can see that the test passed. And if we take a closer look into the query results, we can see that the row count value returned from the source table and from the target table are the same. Since this test passed, there are no results in the Failures tab. So now let's go back to the Query Wizard and go through an example of one of the other comparison types available. We're going to use the same source and target connections as last time. For the comparison type, we're going to select the Table Level Comparison, which will allow us to directly compare all of the data in your source table to all of the data in your target table. We will select the same source schema, but this time we're going to select two of the target schemas. And we'll see more tables in the target list this time. When creating the mappings, you can use the filter function to make it easy to find the tables that you're looking for. Here, I have filtered the list to just display tables with order in their name. Now, as I map some of these tables, you can see that the queries getting generated are different. 
Now they'll bring back all of the data instead of just bringing back the row counts. It's also possible for a source or target table to be mapped to more than one table, as you can see in this example. If you'd like, you can specify your own name to use for your query mapping instead of using the default name. To do this, just double click on the query mapping name in the list. Just as before, I'm going to choose a parent folder for the query pairs and specify a new folder name to be created. I'm going to choose not to create a test suite again, and then finish up the rest of the wizard. So here you can see it created four query pairs. And if I right click on one, I can quickly run it by choosing the run query pair option. Now I can open that, and if I go to the design time run area, you can see it running. So there were five source and target rows in this query pass, and you can see the source results and the target results. And they're the same in this case, so there are no failures. So let's go through the wizard one last time and show an example of using the column level comparison type. So this will not only allow you to choose the specific tables and columns that you want to compare, but it will also allow you to add more detailed filtering and ordering clauses to your queries. So we'll select the schema just as before, but now you'll see we have more options available to us to help generate the queries. First we'll search for the tables we want, just as we did last time. and then we can create a table relationship by dragging and dropping. This will populate the available source and target columns for the selected tables and allow us to choose which columns we want in our query by dragging and dropping from source to target again. You can also set one or more columns as primary keys by clicking on the key icon to the left of the column. The primary key is a unique identifier that is available for each record. It's good practice to set the primary key for your queries if one is available to help improve the results from the analysis and query search. As you can see, we also have the ability to set filtering and sorting options, which will add a WHERE clause or ORDER BY clause to your queries. To do this, we click on the green ADD button on the upper right, which will add a new row to the table. Then we choose whether we want it to apply to the source or target table. We select the column that this will affect. We select the operation and then select the value. So in this example, we are filtering on the source column order date to only include records with an order date after August 1st, 2010. We can also do the same thing for the target side as well. As you can see, as we update these filtering criteria, the queries on the left and the right will update automatically to reflect your selections. You can add as many options as you want. Here, I'm also going to add a sorting clause to both the source and target queries, which can be done in the same way, except the operation will now be sort direction. In this example, the source query will perform an ascending sort on the ID order column, and the target query will perform a descending sort on the ID order column. This again will automatically update the queries. So now if we take a look at one of the queries, we can see the columns that we've selected, as well as the WHERE clause and ORDER BY. Just as before, I can map multiple tables to create more than one query pair. As you can see, when I create a new table relationship, the columns will refresh, as well as the filtering and sorting options. If I map a table relationship and do not select any column relationships, the queries will default to full table comparisons, as we saw in the table to table comparison type. I'm going to add a simple filter to the source and target queries here that will return only records where the ID order status column has a value less than 5. I'm also going to set the ID order status as the primary key. Once we've created all the query mappings that we want, we can go on to the next step. This time, I'm going to again create a new folder under the same parent folder that we had done previously, and name this one Orders with Filters. Now I'm also going to choose to create a new test suite that contains the generated query pairs. 
A test suite in Query Surge is a group of query pairs that can be run together. This allows you to add more organization to your testing and quickly run related sets of query pairs. Once this is done, I can go ahead and generate my query pairs. If we go into the created folder, we can see the two query pairs that were generated from this. We can also go into the scheduling area, and here we see the wizard orders suite. So this is the test suite that was created automatically from the wizard. To quickly run a test suite, I can simply right click on it and choose run now. This will generate a new scenario from the suite uh, that will run all of the query pairs that are in that suite. In the scenario view, you can watch the progress as your tests are run. Once they are completed, you can double click on the suite to open the results, or you can view the details of the queries and any failures, like we've seen in the design time run results. So that's it for the Query Wizard tutorial. If you have any questions or want to learn more on using the wizards, feel free to reach out to us at querysearch.com or write from the application using the questions live chat button.